Hi guys, it's Elaine from Drink With Us and today I'm here with Ronan Collins who is the brand ambassador for Jameson's Whiskey. We're going to have a quick chat about what it's like to be a brand ambassador, the highs and lows and everyday life. Ronan, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's rock and roll. Yeah, sounds right. good. Let's start with how long have you been a brand ambassador? Um, I think it's just over two and a half years. Yeah, so I've been a Perna Ricard for the full two years or two and a half years. Cool. And um, before that, um, you were a bartender, yes? Yeah, um, yeah. I just moved straight in. Yeah, I was working uh, in a hotel bar in the South Bank uh, called Dandelion, and then yeah, just pretty much um, just swapped the job. So uh, I got the I got approached about the job when I was working there. Nice. So you you were you were more or less headhunted. Um, I don't know if I could say it like that, but it was. Uh, it was like a very much right place at the right time. Um, there was a drink on the menu at Dandy at that point that had Red Breast and Jameson in it. And a lot of people from the Perna Ricard team would would have drank that drink. And one day somebody was like, oh, who came up with this one? And well, it was me and uh, the, the Martel ambassador at the time. Uh, was uh, He mentioned that they were recruiting for a Jameson um, ambassador and would I be interested and I said no um, so I, just because I didn't really like I loved working at Dandelion at the time like I didn't really feel like being an ambassador was the right job for me and then uh, he came in like a few more times over the next month and then by the end of like about six weeks I think we we spoke and then by yeah, I think like week six I started the phone or the process. If you weren't in the drinks industry what do you think you'd be doing instead? The career I would like to have, which maybe is a wee bit further from uh, what I would have, but I would love to be an actor. Um, yeah, I think like when I was a kid, uh, the first, like, you know, when you're in primary school, when you write down like the job you want to do when you get older and then obviously your mum keeps all these things in a scrapbook <laughs> and brings them out 20 years later or whatever. Um, I said I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian when I was a kid. Wow. Wow. Um, which is kind of cool. I started doing that a few years ago, which is cool. Uh, but I would love to be an actor or my actual dream job, which I can't do, unfortunately, because of my eyesight, but I'd love to be a firefighter in New York. Wow. Um, so I don't know. Actor? Let's just say actor. Cool, cool. That's what I'd like to be too. <laughs> nice. Nice. So not being an actor, being a brand ambassador, yeah. what are your favorite bits of that? What would you say are, is the massive payoff? in that role um i i love meeting new new people um especially cool people i know every everyone's everyone's cool to somebody which is the main thing but i, I do genuinely love traveling around and meeting new people all the time um although i'm just uk based luckily i've been able to travel with this job quite internationally and just meeting so many random people and seeing how this brand uh is for so many people especially in america like you mentioned jameson and people like light up um so that's really cool um, i really like that part like seeing you or meeting new people and seeing like how the brand evolves in different areas and yeah but you know what i absolutely this is probably a bad thing to say. i love trying all that like really sexy hard to get like one-off spirits i love that because then i know i'm like one of only like 10 people who have ever tried it. Amazing. So, a wee bit selfish that one, but that's a great part of the job. I figure with the, with working for the Jamesons, you probably got a little bit of a celebrity status that you would have had if you were an actor anyway. <laughs> I think I'd probably more, uh, I do more camera work for Jameson than I would probably have ever done as an actor. So yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say is the worst part of, being a brand ambassador um it's super easy to get like to burn the candles on both ends because there is obviously i i like working for perna ricard like we're a huge company um globally and in the uk so you still have that corporate part of the job uh, like that you still have to adhere to and it does seem that the most successful brand ambassadors have that right balance between finding out how to work on the corporate end and the emails and the budgets and then also having the nightlife and the fun with the the uh, the trade, um, and one is significantly funner than the other. <laughs> so one of the hardest things for me was was that balance, especially when I first started. And then 
uh, there, there can be like a lot of times when you're away from home. So um, a few nights a week, but the more you grow and the more, uh, if you're hopefully lucky enough to have a good team around you, you can start to balance that out. Uh, but it, it can take time, especially if you're brand new into the job. It, it's just the energy. It's just so cool. Um, so yeah, like, like that burnout thing, because you are traveling, it's like a lot of the time, like it'll still be like 9 a.m. calls and then you could be out that night, um, which I absolutely love. It's my favorite part of the job. But when new people come into the team, that's our kind of like biggest watch out to make sure people can balance just the two. Yeah. Um, and, and time time away from home, like because you need to be home with whoever that is. Um, yeah, true. So how do you balance that? I drink a lot of water. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I love like rehydr- rehydration packs. Um, I choose days what I'm going to drink, days I'm not going to drink. Uh, I try to get a workout in the second I wake up. Wow. If I don't do, if I don't do it, then like I'll just make up so many excuses. I'm so good at making up excuses <laughs> uh, for just me not doing a workout. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say, like, I'm definitely not the picture of health. And, I'm like, I look at, like, other masters, like uh, Sim Connolly, for example. She's the global beef eater. She is, like, the master of uh, nailing that balance. Uh, so, yeah, do I try to eat as many vegetables as possible. Um, yeah. And, and if I know I'm going to go on, a, like, a tour for a while, like, a week or two, I, like, really, like, mentally prepare for that. Um, I kind of just set stuff in. So instead of just like every evening being a free flow and oh, I'm going to go here and there, kind of be a wee bit more structured. Like I'll go here, have two drinks, go there. I want to see that person and then be like, I have to be in bed by 11 or yeah, it's not as fun doing that, but um, uh, it definitely pays off in the long run. What do you think the industry has taught you as a life lesson? What would you say is the most important thing that you've taken away from the industry? Thinking under pressure. Um dealing with like every and all types of people uh, like you know yourself like from work like working in like ran like a random dive bar you meet anybody and everybody to like a hotel environment again you meet everyone and every everybody um, who all want to be treated sometimes differently uh, sometimes in a nice way sometimes in a difficult way and so yeah working as a team under pressure um uh, yeah dealing with new people constantly and making sure everyone has like a the best experience you can really give them at that time without really saying like it's always great to say you want to blow everyone's socks off but sometimes some people just don't want that they just want to sit in peace and be on tinder or whatever they want to do at the bar um so yeah i suppose like dealing because a bar as well like the bar team is usually a melting pot of people who maybe you wouldn't have been friends with otherwise so uh patience is probably the big thing that has taught me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ronan, what would you say to a bartender who was interested in getting into brand work? What would your advice um, be? Yeah, to be fair, actually, I should I should have a better answer because we uh, like I I definitely get asked that quite a lot, and it's a super valid question. Um, and I kind of stumbled into it, so even I don't really know how I got into it, but um, I would definitely like like LinkedIn like for brand jobs are constantly up. Uh, and it does seem like every company has their own um, way of hiring. Um, some people will like do it through like, do you know these people? Like who's who, who should we approach? Um, but it seems like the majority will like, it'll go up onto LinkedIn because that's just the, the the channel it all goes up onto. And then um, usually every ambassador who works for that company or knows that company will share it. So. Uh, yeah, it's good to like have your network already built up. Um, like at the end of the day, if you're not in it, you can't win it. Um, I wouldn't like, you know how, I don't think you have to have like a certain amount of like brand knowledge before you go into it. I wouldn't have said I knew that much about Jameson. I knew a wee bit about Irish whiskey, but I knew mostly about rum. Uh, and I think just having that aptitude is um, is enough. Um when when we go into hiring and um our boss is like what should we look for like a few of us will always say like it's always great as an ambassador to have good bar dating experience in some capacity 
Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean you have to have worked for like whatever bar. Uh, it's just being comfortable behind a bar because when you do talk to bartenders and consumers, uh, you have to you have to be confident in doing that. Um, kind of like have your favorite brands and like always look at like maybe because you, you never know like your favorite brand of gin could be higher in that week and you know if you don't like set your sights on that and i love middleton distillery which mm -hmm. i'm just in front of <laughs> I, I love middleton distillery and i i love everything we produce and i love jameson so like my passion was like almost the first box i could tick off because it for me, if I wasn't passionate or if I didn't believe in this liquid and spirit, I don't think I could give the two and a half years I've given. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so definitely be genuine enough. Don't just, obviously, everyone's situation is different, but don't just snatch at a job because you're like, oh, great, I'm an ambassador because every company uses their ambassadors very differently. Um, yeah. I think it's uh, quite obvious as well when somebody is passionate about their product and you can feel you can feel if somebody's just in it for because they got the job you know what I yeah. mean you can really tell how different ambassadors talk about their products and luckily I think in the UK our ambassadors across the board are very passionate about what they do but you know you see the odd say sales rep who just there's one product in their portfolio they don't like and you can see it you know <laughs> it's really obvious <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like um, oh, the ambassadors in the UK from every company are just class. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is really cool. Um, it's always good to keep in friends with those guys and girls out there. You always get a little something at some point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. It's all, and the thing is, like, you can learn so much from everyone else because, again, it does depend on, like, that bubble that you're in like commercially and, and uh, uh, like the marketing strategies in your company uh, it could be drastically different from another um, so like I know one of my mates looks after a vodka and his take is so different than what we can actually do right now mm -hmm. um, just because we're going for a completely different direction even though I would love to do it the commercial part of me that he's actually the one that pays the bills has to just sit down and be like well as much as you would like to do it, that's not the right move. So it's great seeing that, like, the variety for bartenders to access now, like, people are doing, like, the cycling challenges um, to, like, cocktail comps. So it's not just a one way, just make a drink. Yeah. You've got, like, so many different routes uh, for so many different ambassadors. So ah, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, I think I'm, I think we're actually we're having something from that friend of yours that works for a vodka company. <laughs> I think <laughs> we've got maybe. something coming from him as well. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, that'll be a good one then. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've gone through your bartending. You've just got a job as a brand ambassador. What advice would you give to stay safe and stay sane? <laughs> <laughs> um... So, yeah, so again, every company is obviously different. I am lucky enough to be in London and our head office is in London. Um, my my advice would definitely be get to know as many people in the office as possible. Um, I I straight away, I joined the, the football team, uh, the five-a-side team on the Tuesday, and then I got to know everyone straight away. So I know the facilities managers and all their teams. I know the IT department, the finance department. Because if your laptop breaks or you need your expenses paid or you need to get stock and all the, 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 the things down, those are the people who will actually change that. No one else. So they, they pull me out of jams a lot. And that's from knowing those teams. Because um, at the start, my boss uh, gave me a tip and he was like, get to know everyone in the office. If they know you, they'll be able to interact with you. They'll tell you stuff that you're going to need to know without double checking you know it just become everyone's friend so i my, my bacon has been saved a lot because of the absolute angels in the office um and like yeah facilities it and finance have saved my back so many times uh, so they're all here so yeah get to know everyone in the office like you would get to know everyone else in a bar um do uh, probably do emails like get set up on emails quite quickly don't like get scared of them i had never really done emails unless it was like like 
an online order or or like a, a food delivery, you know. So I might have done like four emails a week. And when I said done, I just looked and I was like, oh, great, my order's been received. Um, so yeah, my second like big thing when you're starting is get comfortable with your email setup. Like watch YouTube videos on whatever internet or internet system or email system you're using. I, I was really bad at that at the start and the emails just overwhelm me because they're starting to come in and you're like, oh, how do I, I don't really know how to do this quickly. So then when you're out in the trades, all all those friends you just made in the office, if they don't, if they can't really get through to you, what's the point? So that would definitely be the second one. Set yourself up really strong on emails and, um, and like all the online call systems. That'll save, like, again, that, uh, it took me a good eight months to get used to it, two months then to catch up on stuff that I had to get used to. Uh, and it's just like a weight off your shoulder. So, um, and a, a tequila ambassador before I took this job told me that and I didn't take his advice and I really, really regret it. Um, he, we were in an airport in Belfast together and he was doing emails. I was like, geez, you love emails. And I was like, you need to learn how to do your emails as efficiently as possible. Because once you do that, your life's so much easier as an ambassador. Um, and then, um, yeah, like we, we have like an in like, like it's pretty much just the world saying like, don't be a dick. Um, like realize that everyone's just doing their job. Some people might work on a brand that don't have the same passion for you, but that doesn't mean they're not doing their job as good as you just, you have different, uh, objectives. Um, be like, depend on your expenses, be like. Be smart, like with your money. Um, if you're if you've just joined a company, and your and your personal finances are a bit off, like because then you have a credit card and things can change very quickly. So mm -hmm. I'm not great. I'm not great with finance, but thankfully, me and the finance department get on really well. So they made me this really clean cut spreadsheet. So I just like check my finances, um, and yeah, just keep doing exercise. Um, I thought I drank a lot of alcohol as I was a bartender, obviously responsibly, but like, you know, maybe, maybe went out a few more nights than uh, my mate or architect. Um, and then as an ambassador, every day there's some form of alcohol in front of you, whether it's doing a blind tasting for tasting notes or training a bar and tasting their new cocktail menu or something like that. It's very easy to realize you may have had like a cocktail every day, which again is fine as long as you monitor it. And I'm guessing... With Brand Ambassador, you don't really have a set timetable day to day. How do you manage your time? Going from a, a bar where you've had, you know, your shifts are written down for you. You're told what time to be there. You know what time you're leaving. Um, how do you manage not just getting up in the morning and going, oh, can't be arsed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's super tough. Um, for me now, I feel like I'm, I'm light years where I was when I first started. Uh, again, advice I got given at the start was create a work uh, or at least then create a second, uh, whether that be a work or a personal Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't do. Uh, I chose because I kind of wanted to keep what I was doing. And most of my people I would be working with are my friends who are on my personal accounts anyway. So, um, but that means that you can't switch that side off. So um, if you are using those social media, um, channels as interaction with uh, bartenders and bar owners that means they can constantly get in touch with you and then you choose whether you want to answer or not but again I, I just like trying to get back to people I'm really bad at it sometimes but I do like getting back to people whereas I think if you can just like turn that side off when you're like with your partner or with your family or whatever that's a really like good mental break and I know some of the team do it and they're they say it's amazing um I do a lot of like lists. Um, so like that week, I'll kind of have what I need to get done every single day, just written down. It's in my calendar, but I kind of like seeing it written down. And then I'll kind of roughly gauge like, oh, well, I'm in like Newcastle that night. So I'll probably be back at the hotel around one after that event. But I have to be in like Glasgow that day for four. So if I get up, at eight, have breakfast, do a few calls, then that means I have like space in the middle to do a few things. So I really do 
now I plan my days out super strictly um, but it is still tough sometimes when you've like maybe been out you've had a, a great night you've met brand new people who you've maybe had a few drinks with uh, and then you have to get up at six uh, especially the flights from Dublin to London because mm-hmm. a lot of the Dublin team it's great to see them um, and then you might have a, a, a meeting in London at like half ten and you had to be on that six or seven o'clock flight that's when that's when you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> um, but um, I, I'm super lucky that my manager gives me like tons of scope to challenge myself, to constantly innovate and get out there. And I love traveling, so I'm constantly up and down the country. And the motivation I have then when it's possibly a quieter time is I'll like, take on other courses. Like, uh, I was lucky enough to do my WSET Level 3 in Spirits this year. So that took up a huge chunk of downtime. So I, I wrote down like a like a study schedule. Again, stuff that I didn't even do at school, but mm-hmm. you know, you kinda it's good to get into those rhythms, especially in, in the current climate. I have a lot of schedules just to keep myself ticking over and then hopefully have a few more things coming up this year. Um but yeah, like that the the getting out of bed and couldn't be arsed, like it oh, it hits I probably everyone every single day so it's good just to kind of if you've already written it down and you maybe you look at your schedule only really you can be to blame for not waking it up so um yeah that that uh personal accountability mm-hmm. i'm irish so there's definitely guilt somewhere in me <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, that definitely gets me out of bed in the morning and do you um on your days off, do you ever give yourself a day? Because it sounds like you're always quite busy. Do you ever give yourself a day where you just do nothing? Would you yeah. Oh, oh, you do? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so now I like, um, so I'm very much Monday to Friday. Now, those hours do vary. Um, but like I'll do the odds uh, weekend depending on the time of the year, like St. Patrick's Day and Christmas, I tend to do a lot more weekends, but I'm kind of cool with that. And again, most of the time it's super fun and I literally love what's being done. So I'm happy to do it. Um, but yeah, I do, I do sit in the couch usually on a Saturday and just do not move. Um, and weirdly, that's the only time that my housemates ever seem to remember. Um, anytime someone's like, Oh, is Roland ever home? And they're like, yeah, he's always on the couch. Literally one day, like twice a month. Um, yeah, so I love like uh, just turning off as much as I can. Um, I live just off Hampstead Heath. Mm-hmm. So like that's like a three, four hour walk, um, which is class. And like they're all ambassadors, but the people who I live around here are some of my best mates, which is class. So yeah, I, I like switch off quite a bit. But then again, I love the brand. So I will I'll happily always like chat about them when possible. In three words, what is the next big trend you think is going to hit the bar industry? Funner, that's a word, longer, funner, longer, funner, longer and safer. Nice. Um, yeah, just kind of like, yeah, everyone wants to have even more fun um, for a longer period of time, but in the safest way possible. Yeah. You know, um, tapping into so many other trends out there. But um, like, who wouldn't want to like be at a festival um, for like three days and know that they can like safely have a great time, like from morning to night, like still getting like their alcohol kicks, but maybe in a more prolonged or uh, lower ABV style of a way. Uh, I would definitely take that. I've noticed there is a huge over the past sort of two years has been a huge shift in the bar attending industry towards health and mental health particularly, um, which I think is great, to be honest. Um, And I know you guys are doing stuff with that. Um, Yeah, sorry. Yeah, like, it's crazy to see, like, (laughs) how um, the, like, that shift happened. Like, I don't remember any time hearing about anything like that before uh, the past, like, two or three years. And, And I know sometimes those buzzwords are thrown around and sometimes it can come across as a wee bit contrived when some people do it. But regardless of, whatever way some people look at like uh look after your mental health and all the healthy hospital angles like whatever negatives people want to get out of that's fine but though again just having those options for people when you need it uh is unbelievable so um that's like 
if anyone ever needs anything like that, definitely reach out because those organizations and those committees and all are there literally to help, yeah. um, which is bloody class. Yeah, you've done, you've done a lot of work with the Drinks Trust, haven't you, which used to be the benevolent. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that was, I think that was like lockdown week one. That was kind of the big thing. It was like, how do we make an impact? And look, unfortunately, um, you, you, can't, you can't do everything. Uh, you can't do everything that you want. Um, and it seems great to see that every company has seemed to have done something slightly different to really cover all angles, which is, uh, which is very commendable. So yeah, the drinks trust for us we thought was just the strongest one. Um, we donated like yeah a quarter of a million to them in the UK um, to allow bartenders to to apply for I think it was a two hundred and fifty pound bursary. I know I know that doesn't seem like a lot of money, but we really spread the net really really wide to even just that little bump of cash. Um, hopefully, would help somebody. I think, um, I think um, if you're in a situation where you've got no money coming in, like last year I was in that situation for three months because of an injury. And I think 250 quid at that time when you've got nothing, that that does make a huge difference. Even just psychologically, it just makes a difference that somebody goes, there's no strings attached, take it. You know, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's a great thing to do. All right, Ronan, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing with us. Um, Stay safe and stay sane. (laughs) Cheers. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.